And hopefully that should be us live, I hope. So let's open up the chat and see if there's anybody actually tuned in for tonight's episode. Episode, episode that sounds bloody professional. Uh, there we go. And there we are. We're live. Good evening. Start that again. So it's Mike here at Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and it is Saturday, the I don't know when, 11th of July. Is it July? Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Gaff. 11th of July, 2020, and we're still in kind of semi lockdown, COVID land. How you're doing, how you're keeping, hopefully, you're all safe, sound, and tucked up somewhere, and not having to wear one of those damn masks all the time, which is getting to be a bit of a pain for those that wear them. I can't wear a mask. I don't know, some sort of phobia, can't do it. But anyway, there we go. So tonight we're going to be talking about the blessed RGB, or the damned RGB, whichever way you want to look at it. Those of you that have had problems in the past, hopefully you're going to tune in and uh, hopefully I'll explain things possibly a little bit better than I did probably two, three years ago when the big boom actually started. And from what I can see from those of you that have been in the chat already, there's quite a lot of you that have got polarising views on RGB. There's those of you that love it and there's those of you that like it a little bit less, let's say. Me, personally, as you can probably tell from the surroundings around me, I am a fan. I do like it. Although, to begin with, I wasn't overly keen on it, and I started off with those kind of really basic monochrome builds, which actually still to this day do look absolutely amazing. And for those of you that are doing minimalist lighting effects in your rigs, I totally admire you, and I wish I had the same restraint myself. Unfortunately, currently, I do not. So let's say a quick hello to those of you that are in the uh, chat at the moment, as we tend to. Dave Burns is in the house, Angry Doge, Mizra1898, Ghost Adder, Trooper C, David Aitken. Nice to see a lot of you Discord crew in there. Good evening. Uh, Sam's in the house as well. Who else have we got? Danielle Emberley, Skystalker, out of the darkest recesses of uh, Canada making an appearance. He's on a kind of vacation at the moment, so very we are very uh, honoured to have you with us. Click Tech Kev's in the house, and who else we got? Terry Broderick says, hi Mike. Hi Terry, how you doing? I Church is in the house. Sorry, I, I Hutch, not I Church, Church is me. Kind of. Simon Arden's in the house. Simon Arden, very, very good friend of mine. He's not really, I'm just saying that to wind up Simon and also UK Hot Deals if they're tuning in because they think we're really good buddies and he shares some of my videos on our on our, on UK Hot Deals site which is our favourite go-to for getting deals and yeah they keep on having a go at him and having a go at me and banning videos and that kind of stuff but for promotional reasons but yeah what the heck. And talking of promotional reasons I saw a funny one today there's another uh, local Bristolian lad who has started up a YouTube channel and the thing that struck me immediately is, well, his name is Brian, and you'll see why this is relevant shortly, but his channel is called Tech Yes UK. Yeah, Tech Yes UK. So most of you probably, if you're in the tech space, know about uh, Tech Yes City, which is also hosted by a person called Brian over in Australasia. And apparently, from what I can see, he's actually Brian from Australia is giving Brian from Bristol complete like carte blanche yeah go for it use the tech yes branding it's absolutely fine so uh, yeah looks like Bristol's gonna be representing again with another youtuber in the tech space so yeah, feel free to check them out uh, anyway so Ricardo's in the house as well good evening to you Ricardo Ricardo a lot of you do it but Ricardo especially Pretty much every video, even if it's something you don't like, Ricardo gets in there, same as Skystalker and a lot of the others, get on the videos and leave some comments and leave a like on the videos. And to those of you that do that, you're all amazing. Thank you all so much. 
it actually it does mean a lot because uh it shows that you're actually you're trying to trying to help out the channel and we appreciate that don't we calf very much calf nodded i said very much uh who else we got um ewin ewin ferguson have i even pronounced that right if i haven't i do apologize i am something of a sheltered individual and i do not know these technological things so yeah hi thank <laughs> you to you uh we've got half the tree says hi asbro speed says hi from next door <laughs> that's uh, quite worrying uh misra 1898 says i'm ready let's go what else we've got i think jabant one says hi uh, Nigel Thomas, Muckless. Hello, what episode is this? <laughs> yeah, who knows? Could be anything. Kev says even Cap and Mike. That's it. I think we're uh, we're pretty much British noobs in the house. He says, "What is RGB?" Yes. Well, that's actually a, a good one. That's a good place to start with, actually. What is? It's gone. Cap's going to say something. Uh, oh, I Hutch says uh, Bristol for the win, so you must be, I'd imagine you must be Bristolian as well. Ah, <laughs> uh, dear. Uh, Captain Meese Adventures says Brian has been a very naughty boy. No, he seems to, he has a blessing, so yeah, it's all good. Uh, yeah, I think we've caught up pretty much with that. Okay, so what is RGB? RGB is a lighting style or a lighting function, I suppose you'd call it, in modern computers. Most modern computers, not all modern com computers, but a large majority of them. And originally it started for the actual colours that the lights could reproduce, which was obviously red, green and blue, hence RGB. As things moved on, they learned that by mixing different colours within the RGB spectrum, much like you get on an old-fashioned TV screen or even a modern monitor. By adjusting the brightness of individual pixels, you can make the color basically anything you want, which is why you see a screen and you look at it and it looks like all these lovely colors, but essentially it is just hundreds and thousands of combinations of red, green, and blue mixed together, which is how original TVs work. They had a cathode ray gun for blue, one for green, one for red, and mixtures of the two, and that's how you got your television picture. So that is what RGB is. It is basically a lighting um, or oh, a methodology of lighting. After RGB, we got addressable RGB. So in standard RGB, the normal red, green, and blue, you'd normally have a 12 volt strip with all the LEDs on, and depending on how much voltage you put down through either one of the three lines, that would be how bright the LEDs were and what color they were. And they would all be wired uh, parallel, so they're all exactly the same. So if you turned on the red LED at one end, it would be red on the other end. But people got bored of that pretty quickly and monochrome builds were okay, but we all wanted a little bit more. So then came addressable RGB. So addressable RGB is essentially the same kind of thing, but it works on a different system. So each individual LED has its own, essentially like a house number. So if you imagine a strip being like your street you live in, and each one of those LEDs is a house number. So there's a small controller actually on the strip itself, and there's also a controller on either the motherboard or a separate little box of tricks, which the computer tells it, right, okay, I want you to be red on number one, for instance. And on number two, I want you to be yellow. On number three, green, etc., etc. So it goes down through the strip, allocating out the different colors to the different numbers. This is where sometimes it goes a little bit wrong because say, for instance, your software is expecting to see perhaps, let's say 16 LEDs but you've plugged in a strip of 24. That is when, if you put your RGB strip in a loop, it doesn't constantly circle round, which is why in some cases, especially modern PC cases that come with pre-installed RGB fans, quite often, if you hook them up to your motherboard and just set it as its default and let it do kind of unicorn puke, it kind of gets weird and it doesn't quite go round smoothly. And every now and then you'll get a little bit of a jump. That is where you've got either too many or too little addressable RGBs actually in the system and your computer or the controller is trying to address RGBs that basically don't exist. So 
that's addressable RGB. Addressable RGB normally comes in a 5 volt variety, and regular RGB traditionally is in a 12 volt variety, at least for computers. Now, this is where it gets a little bit confusing because you can also get RGB systems which are 5 volt, and you can also get addressable RGB systems which are anything higher than 5 volts, even up to 12 volts, even 24 volts for some other appliances or for maybe vehicles, that kind of thing, which makes things really confusing. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is because recently I got a new Gigabyte motherboard, which is the one in the PC you can see behind me, which is the Aurorus Elite. And that was a really unusual occurrence because it's my first Aurorus Elite board I've had, and the RGB on that board is insane. There is so many different options and features and plugs and sockets it really can be a nightmare. Now the RGB, sorry, the addressable RGB headers on that particular board, there's also a jumper so you can change it from 5 volt RGB to 12 volt RGB, sorry, 5 volt addressable RGB to 12 volt addressable RGB. So to complicate things a little bit more, essentially what that means you can do is you can still use it as a 5 volt controller and it will still be visible as that in the system and the software, but it means you can add a ton more RGB strips. So you could have, rather than being maybe 30 LEDs in a strip, you can have maybe 100, up to 150, that kind of thing. So you could have one long strip that goes all the way around. So if you did the kind of unicorn puke thing, you could have a very, very long fade through the colors, which yeah, could be awesome. And if you've got a really big case, like maybe a Corsair 750D, you could have a RGB strip or an addressable RGB strip it starts off in one corner, went all the way around the outside edges, all the way back and back to the beginning again. And if you told the software how many RGB LEDs you've actually got on the strip, you could have it so a single <coughs> coloured RGB could literally start in one corner, go all the way around and make it a complete circuit around it, which would look absolutely amazing. Generally, it doesn't do that. Normally, you'd have maybe three or four at one point kind of chasing around and eventually they would get to some point where they're getting close. Calf's wanting to ask a question. Noob's already confused. Noob's confused already. That's, yeah, that's probably, <laughs> probably very likely. Noob is a, a youngster and he does get confused very easily, so do bear with him. So anyway, that is why I thought I'd point that out. For those of you that got a Gigabyte motherboard and you have got the additional jumper on your motherboard, yeah, it can be a little bit confusing. So those are the two real main types of RGB. So you've got your standard RGB, which is 12 volt, and you've got your addressable RGB, which for the most part is five volt. So that's what you have normally on a motherboard. And then if you wanna get fans that go with that, it's relatively straightforward to do. So if you want a, say for instance, a RGB fan, or sorry, an addressable RGB fan, something like this, the RGB uh, Sharkoon Shark Lights, these come with what are mostly a standard type of connection. So you have two connectors on the end of the fan, one of which is a three pin PWM style header for the fan and for actually controlling the fan speeds. And as a separate connector, there is a three pin addressable RGB header, five volt. Now these look very, very similar to the original RGB headers, which were four pin. Essentially, all they've done is blanked off one of the pins. So if you're trying to plug a 5 volt system into a 12 volt header, generally, physically, it will not do it because there is a pin blanked out. So as you go to do it, you have four male pins on the motherboard and you try to plug it into there and it wouldn't do it. But unfortunately, because some of the pins in here or actually the, the female part of the socket is raised slightly from the plastic, potentially it is still possible to touch one of the 12 volt rails on the motherboard and one of the either the red, green or blue rails at the same time to make a circuit. So even though these are blanked off, if you try to accidentally do it, put it onto the wrong socket on the motherboard, potentially because they're, oops, sorry, potentially because they're still exposed, you could still actually damage either the controller or the fan or the LEDs. So do be really careful if you're not too sure ask somebody, check out your user manual, definitely a good time to RTFM. If you're not sure what is in the manual, you can definitely join our Discord and there's people in there pretty much 24 seven now. So if you've got any questions you need answering, all you need to do, grab your mobile phone, install Discord on it, take a quick phone with your mobile of the connections you've got either on your fans, 
your LEDs, whatever the case may be. Um, if you've got a case with RGB on it, then take pictures of any connections on there and we can pretty quickly identify it and tell you what needs plugging in where. And recently we've done this tons, which is actually part of the reason why I'm doing this video tonight anyway, because we, it's a question that gets asked all the time. Does my motherboard support a certain feature? Does it do this? Does it do that? How do I connect it up? So I thought I'd try and do a live stream to get some of that going. Now talking of live streaming and RGB, we have got a super chat come in. So yeah. when the super chat comes in, we do get our RGB light come on, which Kath's just getting into focus now. So you can see it. Yes, if we get a super chat, it triggers the disco ball and we get even more RGB than we'd normally have. You are really dark tonight because the living room lights on. I am really dark. That's because I adjusted the ISO on the camera. So that is from Dave Burns. Dave Burns has sent us five UK pounds and it says RGB makes pewter faster. It kind of does, but it doesn't. It's like cars in the old days when you had a car, put some pinstripes on the side of it or put some LEDs on it or some change some lights and it gave you the appearance of it being a sportier car. Wouldn't it be nice if RGB actually did make computers faster? If it did, that one behind me would actually be pretty darn quick. Okay. So it is a bit dark in it actually. Kath, can you press the ISO button on the camera please? Things are gonna get a little bit... Uh, yeah. And then change it to 400. And that should get a bit brighter. No. Uh, sorry, th uh, 1600. Is that 16? Yeah. Go on, let's have 32. Oh, actually, that's probably all right. Yeah. It's adjusting. Dang one. Oh, 16. what the hell? That'll that's do. 1600 is fine. Let's, let's stick with ISO 1600. What do I do? Just that's it, just leave it. It's fine. There we go, little masterclass in how I can get my ISO settings completely wrong. I did put it on auto, and then I thought, no, I'll change it in case we have to darken it for the RGB, and I messed it up, so there we go. <laughs> Hi there. Uh, Nick Monberg says, I noticed I can't join Discord without a phone number. Uh, yes, that is um, basically a security kind of thing for our Discord. Obviously, the computer world... You never know. Thank you. Uh, the computer world in general is normally a pretty decent and kind and well-meaning place but unfortunately there's a lot of uh, dipshits out there who like to make trouble mess up things basically just not be good people so we've had to make it so the discord is only accessible to those who've got verified accounts that are attached to a mobile number so unfortunately if you don't have that then you will not be able to uh, get involved but you don't have to use your own phone number, you can use a parent's phone number, that kind of thing. I just told someone how to circumvent security, that's not good, is it? Oh, anyway. If you haven't thought of that already, there you go. Trooper C asked for the Discord link, and I put it in there. Okay, uh, yeah, so the link's in there. So, wh where are we? I'm losing, lost track of my touch self. Okay, so yeah, that is the, the 5 volt addressable system. So which is, that's all well and good. If you've got headers on your motherboard, you can plug them straight into. That's brilliant. But then people say to me, well, Mike, I've got a header on my motherboard, but I've got like five or six fans. What do I do? So this is a relatively straightforward fix. So if I open up this little box here. I think that was a mini PC. <laughs> I wish it was. This is a RGB splitter. So this takes a standard, well this one is actually for the original 12 volt RGB, not addressable RGB, so this is the four pin version, but essentially it's exactly the same thing. Now you can pick these up, super cheap on Amazon. Um, I think I bought a twin pack, if I remember rightly. Yeah, I think I put the other one in a PC that I got rid of. Oh, actually, no, it's a light. no, I've got it here. So there is uh, a twin pack. So that gives you, you can plug into two headers and have up to eight devices at the same time. These you can pick up for a couple of pounds and they are a fantastic option, especially if you've got like, for me, in the uh, the case behind me, we've got the Sharkoon case, which has got three fans at the front. There's one at the back. It's got its own RGB header, but it doesn't have all those amount of connections on there. So if you want anything else connected, it's a pain in the butt. So you can pick these up really nice and cheaply. Just make sure you get the right ones. If you do get the four pin one, it's absolutely fine. You can use these on the five pin version because essentially they're just a pass through. So because these have not got the pins blanked off, these will work on addressable RGB and they'll also work on regular RGB as a splitter. But 
to, to not get anyone confused. If you build a computer and then you sell it on and it's got these on, they go, oh, there's four pins there. Then they try and plug in something which is not gonna work. It's, yeah, it's not good practice. So ideally buy the ones you need for your specific system. So those are a fantastic way of doing that. There's loads of companies that sell them so you can take a look at those anyway. Another option, if your motherboard hasn't got RGB, is something simple like this. Now this is a SATA powered controller, which comes with a uh, little remote control, much like a lot of systems you see on the market these days. And this essentially has got a remote control receiver on this end, and on this end you've got two 12 volt RGB headers. So this is for 12 volt RGB. There is also versions of this you can get which work with addressable RGB. And again, just make sure you buy the right one. I think originally I got the, which brand is this? This is Tincam, which was the, I don't think that was the, yeah, that was the 12 volt one. But we have done a couple of reviews. You can check out our back catalog of videos or just type in RGB. I'm sure it'll bring up something. So those are really handy and that can give a PC some RGB if it hasn't got it already. And these days, if you're buying or like flipping systems, so maybe you're buying like an old i5 system or something along those lines, then adding a little bit of RGB color, certainly when you're trying to sell the system, will get people's attention. I've done it many times. Put a PC on Facebook at a Marketplace or anywhere, to be honest with you, you just put a picture of a PC without any lighting, especially like Instagram, things like that, and people are like, yeah, it's a PC. But you put it with a little bit of lighting or a little bit of subtle lighting, and it just lifts the whole build and is much more likely to get you a sell. So if you have got a basic PC and it's got a side window and there's nothing going on in there, pick up some of these. They're like 10 pounds or 15 pounds for the set with, generally they come with a couple of RGB strips or addressable strips. So for the sake of that, you can plug in, make it look nice, make it look cool, attract those kind of uh, Fortnite players and that sort of thing, and hopefully you will sell the PC. <clears throat> so that is a standalone system. Now, there are other systems as well, which you can get, which uh, can be used as a standalone system or will plug into a motherboard as well. So if you've got a motherboard with addressable RGB, you can then plug it in and it can bypass through it. Now, one of those is, where is it? Can't see for looking. Oh, there it is. From Sahara Gaming. Now, Sahara have been really good to me in the past. They've sent us loads of stuff uh, for reviews, etc. So I thought I'd give them a quick shout out because, well, it's actually pretty decent stuff and it's really handy and relatively cost effective. And if you watched my build recently, um, which had this in there, the Iced Rainbow, I used the Iced Rainbow with a selection of fans and one of these controllers, and it just looked amazing, it really did. It, it did add to the cost of the system, but I think it looks really nice. So I'll have a quick look at this, so you can see what you actually would get. So again, you get a remote control, so that's the standalone side of it, but on the remote control, you've got an option so you can press the motherboard sync. So when you press motherboard sync, you can then use the cables included, which I'll try and get out without damaging. So you get one of these, basically a controller. So you can plug in Sahara's fans. Unfortunately, Sahara's fans are all on a proprietary connection, which is something generally I would tend to avoid unless you can connect up everything to it, which then it does start to make sense. So this is powered by, again, a single SATA connector, and this will power the fans, both RPM wise and also the lighting. So you can plug up to 10 fans in there, I think it is. Yeah, one, two, three, yeah, 10 fans or eight fans, two LED strips, whatever combination you want to do, you can do that from here. And then there's a simple cable which comes out of the controller, just plugs in one end, and then you get this long cable which you can then plug into your motherboard. And that has got a three pin addressable RGB connection and also a four pin PWM style fan connection. So then you can take control of all of the fans that are connected to this hub and then control them from either the remote control or from your motherboard software. So this is actually a really, really nice little idea. And if you're gonna be buying a case anyway, if you see a Sahara case you like, generally pretty much every single case now comes with these controllers built in. So it's a really nice option and it does give you a pretty decent level of flexibility. Calf's got her fingers up, so that means either she's telling me to off or I've got a question to answer. 
It's probably a question. Uh, Kaylern, Kaylern. Uh, what's that? Have a set of these fans with the controller and the control. Have a set of fans with a controller and a controller for my AIO. Is it possible to plug both into an RGB header? Kaylern, it depends exactly what ones you've got. If it is uh, the Sahara ones, I don't think they do a, an AIO. I could be wrong there, I'm not entirely sure. But that is actually something I was going to come on to next, which is the kind of the compatibility issues we get with RGB, which can be an absolute pain in the backside. Let's just pack that away a moment. And actually, if, if you want to see any of this lit up or uh, me to show you how it works, actually get it fired up. I've got a power supply here ready, so if you want to see any of it, I, I can try and fire some of it up just so you can see what it looks like and see what the controls are like. Uh, J. Jones, J. Jones. Uh, J. Jones, I'm thinking about getting an Arctic Freezer 2 280 AIO to replace my AMD Wraith Prism. Will I need to get any extension cables to fit on my motherboard? Um, no, you won't. Um, the Arctic Freezer 2 280 doesn't have any RGB. Uh, it is completely RGB void. So you won't need anything um, to replace your Wraith Prism. Anything you do need cable-wise will be included with the Freezer 2 anyway. So, so uh, yeah, actually, yeah, we did a review on the 240, I think. It's on the shelf somewhere. Yeah, there it is. Um, yeah, we did a review on it, so if you want to check that out, Cap will put a link in the video description, so, uh, not in the video description, in the chat now, so you can take a look at that. Um, okay, so yeah, going back to the, uh, the Sahara controller, you can get a selection of different fans that they do. I say it is a proprietary connection, a six pin connection, which only works with Sahara equipment. So if you do get into the ecosystem, um, you're stuck. Now that's not a bad thing because it is actually a pretty nice ecosystem and it's gradually evolving and evolving as time goes on. So they've got the Typhoon 14 fans, which um, these were really weird. These come with the, uh, the C500B, which I reviewed ages ago. And there was three of them in there, two in the front, one in the back, 140 mil fans. And I thought that is perfect because it's a little bit bigger than the 120, so you get that more airflow. You don't lose on static pressure like you do with 200 mil fans. So these are a really good idea. And because they're bigger, they've got bigger LEDs, they give off more light, etc., etc. But the weird thing was with these, the minimum RPM is like 800 or 1200 RPM, which for a 140 mil fan is actually pretty noisy. So these sound like, a, they literally do sound like a typhoon. It's ridiculous. And I did reach out to Sahara and say, well, look, what's the deal with these fans? They're really loud. Like, how can you really sell these with a PC for, and then be quiet there? And I guess they must be testing it in slightly different conditions, but I'm trying to see where, yeah, it says here this, the, the starting voltage was six volts and the speed listed actually on the box was 400 to 1500 RPM, which at first looks sounds absolutely brilliant. But for some reason, I couldn't get mine to go below it's kind of 800 RPM, so they were quite noisy, which is why I ended up not using those, and I swapped them out for the Sahara um, Dewey Ring fans, I think they were, which were considerably quieter. But unfortunately, you needed more of them to move the same amount of air, which was unfortunate. But say, if you want to hear what they're like, I can fire them up for you, and you can see what they're like. So, yes, Kath? Um, Skepta and Stephen Ard Simon Arden and uh, Skepter says, okay, Skepter, let's answer a question. Skepter says, uh, I'm thinking of getting the Silverstone SST RL08 BW. You have done a review, but I'm not too sure on that inverted motherboard. Cheers. Uh, Skepter, I'm with you on that one. And uh, that case, actually, I think Glenn on our Discord, I think he ended up having it after, after I finished with it. He's not in our chat at the moment, so... I'm with you on that one, Skepter, to be honest with you. The inverted setup isn't for me. It really isn't. I, Especially now with a lot of modern motherboards and, again, obviously, RGB. Now, a perfect example of this is, actually, if you look in the PC behind me, there is now a Gigabyte graphics card with RGB on it because I've kind of changed this around. This is essentially an all-Gigabyte setup in here now just so I can get the RGB to all sync. But that has got... 
gigabyte on it and is illuminated. So if you have that inverted as you would the rest of the system, it just looks like it's upside down, which is weird. It, it's not meant to look like that. Pretty much everything on the motherboard has got writing on it, which is designed to be looked at, at a certain way. The AMD logo on the fans, um, the writing on the RGB RAM, even the cooler generally will have something stamped on it, which is designed to be written or to be looked at at a certain orientation. So I think um, inverted motherboards would have been fine maybe five, ten years ago, before the kind of the whole blingy stuff started. But now I, I just don't think it's a good idea. Also, it's, it goes against conven convention. It goes against convention. Well, it does actually. It goes against convention, but also goes against convection. So components are designed with certain ideas of how they thermally get rid of their heat. So heat generally rises, which is laws of physics, and you have fans to aid that. So you have fans blowing cold air in, which then creates a kind of an effect, so heat rises. So if you've got a inverted chassis, the graphics card is now fighting against itself because hot air is trying to rise, but you've got a fan on top trying to push cold air into it. So yeah, it's, I don't get it. It doesn't, it doesn't compute for me. And it, yeah, upside down wiring confuses the hell out of me. Anyway, I'll move on from there. Simon Arden. Simon Arden. Mike, explain where the three pin PWM goes on the motherboard lol. The amount of times I get this. Okay, that's fair enough. Um, have I got a motherboard here that I can actually show that on? That isn't already in a case. <laughs> that could be tro that could be problematic. Um, there isn't, is there? Okay, I'll try and I'll try and work it out. So. Actually, if I set up the fans, then you can see kind of the process and how you go about it. So we use the Sahara ones. Maybe we can make a video on that. Yeah. Actually, better still, I will... Let's get rid of some of this. I've got a set of the up here fans, which I've uh, I've been a champion of for quite a while. Let's move a lot of this stuff out of the way, actually. That is my uh, my downgrade. I actually bought this this week. This is the uh, RX 570 Gaming 4 gigabytes which I actually swapped out what was in my PC behind me was a RX 580 and I downgraded it just for RGB. What a sad, sad man. Do you want a drink? Yeah, that's a great idea. Uh, yes, please. I'll just have tea, please. Okay, so let's fire up the Sahara system because I've said I've been talking about that, so I might as well do it. Actually, I'll have a quick drink of my tea. You don't mind? Thank you. Okay. Burning up a bit today. Hopefully, it's not uh, the dreaded. But I have been out in the garden today sunbathing, so it could be that. <laughs> Got a bit, of a, a bit of an afterglow effect going on. I'm, actually, I've got my own bodily RGB, which is pretty cool. Okay, so controller. So first of all, we'll connect up the SATA. Obviously, make sure your power supply is not active or on. Ideally, disconnected would be a good idea, but I can't reach mine, so it isn't. So there's your power. You then have your connection to the motherboard. So that plugs into the bottom here. There's a proprietary connection for that. So that's plugged in. So effectively that is the controller done. All you need to do then is on your motherboard at the bottom somewhere, you'll see there's gonna be an RGB header. Now for most motherboards, uh, Gigabyte, ASRock, um, Biostar, and a few others, generally they'll have two sets of, of uh, addressable RGB connections. Three pin connection, generally it'll be along the bottom, so where you've got your USB 2, USB 3, your uh, IO switches, that kind of thing. All those pinouts along the bottom, you'll find one of those there. And it's quite handy because normally you'll have a fan output there as well. So you can plug both of these in right at the bottom of your motherboard generally. Or depending on how you wire it, you might find it nearby where the CPU uh, fan connector is. Generally there's either that top connection there or somewhere at the bottom. Again, if you don't have either of those on your motherboard, with this particular setup, you can just leave that disconnected. You don't even have to connect that wire if you want to save on cable space, but I would personally leave it connected and maybe tuck it in the bottom of the case 
So if you do upgrade or you maybe sell the case on with the fans, whoever is gonna put a new motherboard in or whatever, they've got those connections there available so they can make their system look nice. And talking of making things look nice, this is the Sahara Gaming. This is the Typhoon 14, which normally is quite loud. So with these controllers, there is something which you should bear in mind. Ideally, you want to connect, if you've only got one fan or more than one fan, always make sure that the, the header marked number one is connected because normally that'll be the one that'll do the fan monitoring. So I'm gonna have a close look. I'm pretty sure it is that top left one. Normally it's printed on there, but it doesn't actually say it on this particular one. But we'll plug it into that one anyway. So that effectively is it. So when we turn on a PC, which I'll demonstrate by using this block connector on our 24 pin connector. This is just an old power supply used for testing purposes. So plug that in and that should come alive. And there we go. So that would be the PC powered on. Now, as you can see at the moment, there is nothing happening to the fans because this is in auto mode or fan control mode. And because we haven't got the fan header connected to anything, it's not generating an RPM uh, signal or PWM signal. So it's basically stopped. So then you'd use your remote control and then you can click on fan auto. And I bet this hasn't got battery in it now. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be just my luck. Come on, I haven't got an else for this. Oh no, that's got a battery in there. I lied, maybe a flat battery. Is that the right way up? No, that way around. That's better, is that gonna work? Yeah, yes, yeah, so that works. So, fan, of course, fan auto wouldn't do it because it's motherboard. So, fan plus and minus, and then that will turn on the fans. I thought that was going to blow over then. So, that is with the fan on, just using the remote control. Again, if you haven't got many fan headers on your motherboard, this is actually a really good solution because you can put a ton of fans connected to it and control it from the remote control. Although, I would suggest possibly not getting the, uh, the Typhoon 14s. So, I think that's on top speed now. Which is pretty noisy, I don't know, is it coming out on the microphone? Oh, that's quite nice and cool. Yeah, that basically has no difference whatsoever. Turn it off. So that's the difference in the noise profile. But one thing Sahara do have up their sleeve, even if the fan isn't particularly quiet, I think it looks really nice. And the RGB effect through that kind of very lightly opaque top actually shines out really nicely. And if you've got quite a few of them all connected up at the same time, it looks pretty decent. So that is the Sahara fan controller and the RGB fans. So I'll have a quick look at the questions. And uh, Kaylin says, easy DIY fab fans times five with controller and the Regintech AIO with RJ key PWM controller. That's quite the setup there. So, uh, Ricardo, da -da. okay, we're up to date there. I'm oh, gone. Okay. Um, right. Yes. Yeah, so the next part of it is so that is basically the different types of fans, that kind of thing. Again, there's the up here version, which is. Considerably more expensive, but it does come with, uh, what was it, five fans, six fans? One, two, three, four, yeah, five, there's six fans in this set, in this one. And again, this is slightly more elaborate, so you've got a, a slightly nicer looking fan controller. Despite the fact you don't really look at it, but it's uh, still one of those things. If it's in your PC, you want it to be nice. And this has got the standard RGB type connections for addressable RGB and four pin PWM. So if we went back to our original fan, which was the, actually I might as well just get one of these. Oh no, I'm not gonna get those out. They took ages to pack away. <laughs> the, this one here, we go to the, uh, what was that? Sharkoon Night Shark, Shark Blades, something like that. I don't know, whatever it was. But this is just a standard connection. So this is to show 
the compatibility or cross compatibility between the up here kit and other bits on the market. So quite easily, all we can do is we've got our five pin, sorry, three pin, five volt addressable RGB, which we can plug in to there. And then we've got our PWM fan, which you can plug into there. And then this bit, you can plug into your motherboard again, as we did before. So PWM controller and the addressable RGB. And then we've got our SATA power. So again, this will power a similar amount of devices. I think this one maxes out on eight, if I remember rightly, maybe seven. Yep, seven this one is, sorry. So seven devices. It's a slightly nicer looking unit in my opinion and also because it works kind of backward compatibility with normal inverted commas 5 volt addressable rgb the up here system is actually really good and i've used this uh on quite a few of my own pcs and the fans do control the rpm very well the downside being i found that there is um well at least i believe this is what the case to be is there is a kind of capacitor inside of here which stores the memory. So if you've got this connected to a PC and you've not had it on very long, you'll find that every time you turn the PC off and then turn it back on again, it's reset itself back to its kind of factory settings for the RGB illumination, which can be a pain in the backside. But I did find that by having mine on for maybe about a week and doing it, eventually it kind of just buckled in and did what it was told to do. Now, a couple of other people have mentioned this as well. Uh, I know for sure Dave Burns did as well. I uh, he mentioned it, and it is it does seem to be a thing with these up here controllers. So it does appear that there's something either in the chipset actually inside this box or some sort of compatibility thing where it just needs to be left on for ages for it to kind of gain some charge in the capacitors or whatever it is. Maybe it's a bug in the software, the controller built in, I don't know. But after a while, it does seem to work absolutely fine. And for, I think this was running like 40 pounds, 45 pounds maybe, but 45 pounds for six fans and a controller, which has got compatibility pretty much across the board. Unfortunately, where the compatibility goes wrong on a lot of these RGB setups is with the motherboards. So like I said earlier, most motherboards, Gigabyte, Asus, uh, not so much Asus probably. So Gigabyte, ASRock, Biostar, and uh, who else am I thinking of? Yeah, the two problem ones I would say that's going to be probably easier is ASUS and MSI. Now, a lot of MSI motherboards, especially in the B450 range, which is obviously super popular, you've got boards like the Tomahawk, um, you've also got the Bazooka, the Pro Carbon's okay, but most of the ASRock uh, <laughs> MSI boards, the B450, and almost all of the ASUS boards up to a certain price point on the B450 chipset don't have addressable RGB. They've only got the old fashioned 12 volt RGB. So quite often the question I get is, Mike, I've got a Tomahawk motherboard and I've bought XYZ addressable RGB fans. How do I get it to work? Now the simple answer is you can't, it doesn't. The two systems are not designed to work with each other. There is a small caveat to that. You can buy a, an adapter which will convert a 12 volt system into a 5 volt system but because the 12 volt system originally never had the facility to address addressable RGBs the 12 volt system will still only address all of the 5 volt system in one go so you don't get any benefit apart from you actually do get some illumination so say for instance you've bought a um, a Kraken cooler for example which has got an addressable RGB unit Actually, that's probably a bad example because I think that works off a of USB anyway. So let's say an unbranded product which has addressable RGB, some sort of fan or cooling system, whatever it might be. If you've then got your Tomahawk motherboard and you want to connect it up, you won't get addressable RGB. You will only ever get the kind of static colors or the, the color fade where all the colors change at the same time, which I think is what I've got going on behind me at the moment, if I remember rightly. Yeah. Oh, they're slightly out of sync, I think, at the moment, <laughs> ironically. So that is a 5 volt addressable RGB system, but because the graphics card, although it supports the Fusion 2 software, it's still only a standard 12 volt lamp that's in there, so it can't be addressed and you don't get the rainbow effect on it. 
So I've got it set to color cycle just to kind of try and keep things slightly in sync, which is effectively what you'll be doing if you're adding any five volt system via a converter to a 12 volt system. You with me still? I hope so. Kath's got her fingers up again. Andre. How many? Andre. Andre says, hey Mike, uh, so I have the up here kit as well, but my controller only has a SATA cable coming off of it. Does that mean I cannot control my fan speed from the motherboard? Um, if you've only got the, okay, uh, up, the up here kits, there are about 30 different kits. So depending on which version you've got, now, the version that I've got here, I'll read out the model number, so we're all talking from the same hymn sheet, so to speak, which actually I don't think it says it on here, which is absolutely ironic. I think this was the one that ended in a number seven, which doesn't help a lot. It'll be in my video review, but they do actually do a version of this which doesn't have any fan control and it just has static fans. Now, I actually did make that mistake myself and I bought it. It was... There's a very subtle difference between the two part numbers. And I thought, oh, excellent, there's a bargain on Amazon. It's about 10 pounds cheaper. So I thought, oh, it must be just on special offer. But as it turns out, it wasn't on special offer. It was because the fans were static RPM fans, which I think were static at maybe 1,000 RPM or maybe 1,200 RPM, which again, like I said, with the Typhoons, is a little bit on the noisy side and not great. So I actually sent that set back and then reordered the set, which actually does come with it. The easy way of working out which one it is on the Amazon listings, if you bought off Amazon, one of them, in the if you scroll right down through, it says product details. One of them says um, fan RPM, and it lists the maximum speed, the 1200. But if you look across slightly at different prices, there's one that lists kind of 400 to 1300 or something, which is what this version is. So that is the one which actually has PWM control. The other one, sadly, has no control whatsoever. So they are static fans, unfortunately. So. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news, Andre, but um, yeah, hopefully that answers your question. And also, other people have asked exactly the same thing, saying I can't control the fan speed, where do I, how do I do it? And I've said to them, well, you just plug in the PWM controller to the motherboard and then that should take care of it. They're like, well, no, just the fans spin regardless. And that is, unfortunately, the kit which has got the static um, speed on there. Uh, J. Jones. <laughs> David Aitken is uh, just give us a five pound and one penny super chat. And Dave claims that he is the most generous Dave watching this stream. <laughs> Thank you, David. We appreciate that. Uh, Vez says BLM. Right on. Uh, J. Jones. Oh, J. Jones has said, will the Arctic Freezer 2 280 fit on the ceiling of my GameMax F15 mesh case? Um, it's, it's extremely, extremely tight, depending on your motherboard and your cabling. I tried it with my um, Asus Tough Gaming, and because of where the power cable went into the top corner, it was actually making it virtually impossible to do. So depending on what motherboard you're using and where the power cable goes in, the VRMs, that kind of stuff, and how thick, actually, no, the rad will be, the thickness of the rad will be fine, it's just the physical width of it, you will be impeding on it. So I would say no, go for the 240 mil, which is what I've actually had installed in there. I know for a fact that that is still a little bit on the close side because of the thickness of that rad. Hopefully that answers your question. And we've got another super chat from Roll Call XP. Got $5, it says I have a ASUS X570 tough board. What ARGB or RGB fans would you suggest best compatibility? Well, that's an easy one. Definitely the, the up here set, but make sure you get the right set. Don't get the ones that don't have the PWM control because they're good. They still do the same job effectively, but you just don't have that control over them as much as you would do. Those are really good. Um, depending on how many fans you want to add, you've got two I think you've got two addressable RGB headers on there. So depending on how you want to do it, you've got loads of fan headers anyway. Another option would be, depending if you like them, the Sharkoon, um, which ones are these? I, I forgot the name of them again. <laughs> I am useless. Sharkoon Shark Lights. I think these look incredibly interesting. It's a really nice look. So depending on what case you've got, um, those are really good and very compatible. 
trying to think which other ones there are on the market. There's tons, basically there's tons and tons of fans on the market, but try and get an addressable RGB fan with the, um, well, actually saying that you can get either because the X570 board has both an addressable RGB and standard RGB. So if you just want to go static colors, then you can totally do that from that board. Just again, with the fan splitters, you can do that. If you want to go addressable RGB and you want those kind of chasing effects, then you will need to get an addressable RGB cooler fan thing. But yeah, the up here one is definitely worth doing. Take a look, I did, uh, if you look on, go on to, just type in Mike's unboxing. You'll probably get Mike Tyson boxing as well, but don't worry about that. Go to Mike's unboxing and just type in up here. Check out the review and you'll see what they're like. They work really, really well with that X570 setup. Other than that, Game Max do some really good stuff as well. But again, depending on what case you've got already, if you've got a case which is in one of the ecosystems, then mixing and matching might not always be quite so easy. Uh, we had another super chat from David Burns. It says, he's given us two pounds and says, your move, Aitken. Oh dear, here we go. <laughs> uh, Bez? Bez. 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 <laughs> Vez, Google Home Mini Chalk versus Charcoal, which is better? Um, I would imagine they're exactly the same. The only difference being is the color preference. So if you've got a, a white background and you want it to blend in with it, then get the chalk one. If you've got something and you want it to actually contrast with it, maybe get the charcoal one. I don't think there's any difference to them whatsoever. Although I think the charcoal one came out on the second version, so there may be some subtle differences that I'm not aware of. Uh, yeah, not a clue, but I would imagine functionally they should be pretty much identical. And personally, I think I've had a couple of the chalk ones, so I'd quite like a charcoal one just to see what it's like. Uh, Gary says, hi, Mike and Calf just joined in. Thanks, Gary. Oh, and what have I done here? I've broken something. There we go. And we've got another super chat. I can't see who it is because I'm stupid and I've just closed down the window that it's all on there. And this is from Click Tech Kev. <laughs> uh, Nick Monberg, thank you very much for posting that on there. Uh, yes, the T7SYC7-6 and the T7SYC7-3 the PWM ones from up here. Thank you, Nick. Appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> Click Tech Kev's donated two pounds and says, you should add some RGB strips to your chair. You don't mention your chair. That's not a bad idea. That is not a bad idea. Thank you, Kev. And if you haven't visited Kev's channel, please go ahead and do so. Kev's a long time supporter of Mike's Unboxing and is actually a regular on our Discord also. So if you want to have a chat to me or maybe you want to have a chat with Kev, feel free to join our Discord and jump on. Oh yeah, that's it. He's broken the RGB. Now this is a downside of RGB. It often breaks. Oh, I can't get it to it now. I haven't got long enough thing. Yeah, that's it. And then you've got to, oh no, you don't have to turn it back on, do you? That's right. And talking of chairs, what do you think of the chair? This is the new upgraded chair from our friends over at GT Racing. Although technically in Europe they're called GT Playing, uh, sorry, GT Player, my apologies. So they sent this to us uh, to see what we think of it. Actually, I'm, I'm loving it. Compared with those other chairs that I've been sit on, sit on, that I've been sitting on for the last, well, when did we buy this house, Calf? 17 years ago, did you say? 16 years we've had this house and we bought the table and chairs when we moved in, didn't we? That was our dining room table and chairs and I've been using those chairs for the last, those many years. We've re reupholstered them, we've re them three, three or four times. They've lasted really well, but they are damn, damn uncomfortable. So when a GT player reached out and said, oh, do you wanna try one of our gaming chairs? It's like, yes, <laughs> thank you very much. But then I realized actually, damn, I'm gonna have to build that and no doubt you guys are going to want to see me go through the process. But you're going to be so nice I did there. Uh, yeah, what's that? Damn, my wife hasn't got one. I was, yeah. Also, yeah, that is the thing. Kath now wants hers. She wants, they do one of these in pink and white. 
and it does look amazing. But unfortunately, they're currently out of stock in Europe, so unfortunately for now we can't get one of those, but it's definitely on the shopping list. And there's another super chat from the British Noob, who's, <laughs> we had a little bit of an on-running joke about tattoos in our Discord this week, and they suggested that I should get head tattoos to make it look like I've got kind of stubble on my head. But I don't know. I can't see you've got no hair. But now, with the super chat active, you can't see my head or hair, so I don't think I need it. Maybe not. <laughs> Can you go back up to Jay Jones? Uh, yes, Jay Jones says, so Arctic 240 on the ceiling of the Gamax F15 mesh. Uh, would I have the fans pushing out air or pulling? Because the, um, the F15 mesh has got those two big fans on the front, the 200mm ones, which are RGB, um, there's tons and tons of positive pressure in that case. So if you put the radiator on the top and have the fans pushing out, the fans actually don't have to work particularly hard to get a really, really good temperature in there because the air is trying to escape anyway. So even though they are pressure optimized fans, they just they don't really have to struggle to get rid of the cooling, uh, to get rid of the heat at all. It works out really well. So I would have them exhausting and take off the magnetic filter off the top as well just to reduce some of that kind of uh, exhaust restriction. A bit like taking the baffles out of your exhaust. Uh, Vez says, can Google Home Mini control the lights of my room? Uh, yes, it can, and I do quite frequently. I will demonstrate. Hey Google, turn off the studio lights. There we go. Sorry, something went wrong and I'm unable to control your home device. You will get a lot of that. Hey Google, turn on the studio lights. There we go. To control your home device. If you have one of the lights turned off in the room that you're trying to control, you do get an error message and my uh, RGB angle poise lamp is currently switched off at the mains, so it can't control it, so I get the error message. So there we go. 80s horror fan, uh, 80s horror fan. good evening to you. Not had any time for YouTube. Gary says, nothing better than a free chair. It is, that, it's quite, it's a weird thing. When you get given stuff to review, even though it's free, it's not brilliant. It's not like it's Christmas every day. It's a really, really weird feeling when someone sends you something because you know when they send you something, you've got to then build it, make it, test it, Whatever the product is, benchmark it, take it through its paces, do a tutorial on it. it yeah, it's basically when something turns up, it's another day at work. <laughs> Gary has kindly sent us $5 and says for a smiley face head tattoo. David Aitken, if you're listening, and Erin, if, uh, if you're putting up with David watching this at the moment, A, I apologize because, well, this me, I would not want to watch it myself. But thank you for uh, letting David uh, attend or whatever. And yeah, maybe David can actually do a Photoshop of that, a smiley on my head and put it on the Discord and then we can share it with everybody. Okay, anyway, so back to that. Um, Jay James, great, cheers for that, no problem. Uh, Yeah, someone's mentioned IQ software. So that is another side of RGB as well. This is what I call the, the messy side of RGB, the expensive, messy stuff. Ah, is it dropping frames? What's going on? Oh yeah, it is, you're quite right. I'm dropping frames. Okay, people, bear with me. Okay, so that, so OBS is working okay. So it is the mainstream. So this is, yep, it's a Google thing. Is that back up now? I think so. I think it's dropped resolution. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, OBS hasn't dropped any frames. So it, unfortunately it is a Google side thing. Bastards. Anyway, 
moving on from that. So as I was saying, yeah, after we've got all this kind of the more standardized stuff, you then go up to the, the ranks of the expensive and really the kind of the sealed ecosystems. Now those are IQ and also Thermaltake system as well. Thermaltake, um, yeah, they pretty much own it as far as I'm concerned as far is with overpriced RGB. When they started out, they had the, the ring system. And I actually had the th one of the original thermal take water coolers, the 240 mil ring plus, I think it was, or ring 3.0. And it did its own thing with RGB. It had a little control box on the back, which you could change the fan speed and change the RGB solid colors or just the cycling between the colors. Is that you? Yeah. Okay. I could hear something. I couldn't work out what it was. <laughs> it was someone coming through the ceiling. And there's another super chat. I've got to open that other window now. David Aitken, £2.25. Only £2, Mr. Burns. I thought you liked Mike and Calf. <laughs> Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Captain Music Venture says, you've gone all Max Headroom. You've gone back to the 80s. Tesco Broadband strikes again. Uh, no, it is... It's actually Virgin Media, and they generally are pretty good. Yeah. Price. Hopefully it's okay for you guys now. Has it settled itself down? Good. Okay. Right, so where was I? Yeah. The thermal take system, the ecosystem for RGB, <coughs> is bloody ridiculous. It is, it is. The fans and the whole setup is ridiculously expensive. And like most systems, they, it doesn't want to play nicely with other equipment. So if you buy into it, very much like if you buy an Apple product, you're in that ecosystem. If you buy a Google product, like an Android phone, you're in that ecosystem. So you really have to make a choice where you are and how much you want to spend as well. Dave Burns has come out with £2.26. He says, even now, already got a pen, not spending more. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you don't understand what that is, if you want to support Mike's unboxing in a, a slightly different way from Super Chats, you can join us or support us on our Patreon. And if you do support us on our Patreon, if you spend $5 as a monthly pledge after your first billing cycle, we'll send you one of these. Our Mike's unboxing dual action pen and stylus. So you've got a stylus on the end, so you can use that with your touchscreen devices, your iPads, uh, sign for deliveries, all that kind of stuff. It's actually a, a cool little pen. And to be honest with you, when it comes to the point of actually shipping these out around the world, the price of the pen and the shipping is pretty much $5 or more. So yeah, if you want to get yourself a bargain, get one of these. We hope, we pray that if you do join us on Patreon, you do donate $5 or more, that you continue to do so for at least a month or two, just so we can recoup our costs. But it's just a nice way of us sending you something so you know that we're not just taking money off you relentlessly you will get something back for it. And also when we send them out, we send a, a little picture as well. Kath and I got a little picture, which we put in there. Sometimes we'll write a little note on it, but more times than not, we just put a picture on and saying thank you. So to all of those that do support us on Patreon, happy days, thank you very much, we appreciate it. And the higher tier members, not only do you get a Mike's Unboxing pen, you also get Mike's Unboxing classic t-shirt as well, which again, we hope you stay, stay on Patreon for a while just to help us pay off the costs. Anyway. That's enough of me uh, trying to prostitute myself. <laughs> uh, yes, moving on. Okay, uh, Wavy Sound says, I'm looking to build a server for data storage. Do you have any suggestions? Um, I do, I do, but it's probably not the time or place for that discussion. This is predominantly about RGB and motherboards, so we'll, um, maybe I'll come back to that later, or if not, send me a message on Discord or join on Discord and we can have a chat about it then. I am actually in the process of looking for my own uh, data center or data server, I suppose you could call it. I really, really do fancy the, the thought of a Windows server, like a, a Windows 10 server, a proper Windows database type server. But I'm, I'm in an hour about it because there does come with that. You've got all sorts of issues with uh, domain registrations and all those kinds of things. So I'm looking for something a little bit simpler. 
but I'm not entirely sure yet. So maybe we can uh, bank some ideas off each other. That'd be quite good. Nimrod Quimbus says, Mike reminds me of the mummy in The Mummy. <laughs> Do you know what? I get quite a lot of that. It's either The Mummy, Kurt Angle, um, Private Pile. Uh, who was the other one? The Man in The Mummy. The Man, yeah, I said that. And... Private Pile, Kurt Angle. Today was the beautician in the Princess Diaries. Oh yeah, the, the beautician in the Princess Diaries, whatever that is, I don't even look that one up yet. <laughs> ah dear. Anyway, there we go. Yeah, British Noob likes his. Yeah, we sent uh, British Noob a, uh, a picture with his patron. Dave Burns put a patron link in there. Bless you. Okay, um, right, back to the RGB. So Corsair, um, EVGA to some extent, Thermal Take, they're, they're the ones that really stick out at the moment as being kind of, or well, NZXT I suppose is kind of in that era. A lot of their systems don't work with other systems, so once you're in, you're in, and it's basically just open your wallet, throw money at them. Thermal Take especially, it is, to be fair, a very, very good ecosystem, and there's lots of stuff you can get, and you've got really, really good granular control over all the RGB features and lighting. You can make it your own custom stuff. It's very, very flexible, but for that flexibility, you do have to sell basically bodily organs or your children to be able to afford it, because it's really, really expensive. Like just a fan on its own, a good fan, which is kind of connects to their own hubs. You're looking about, 25, 30 quid just for a single fan. A three pack I saw one time, I think, when they've come out a three pack with a controller and it was like 150 pounds. And I'm thinking, that's the price of a processor for three fans which basically move air. And if it's under a desk, why bother? But I suppose if you've got one of these PCs which is on, a, on display, such as kind of like that, it does make some sense to have that sort of stuff. So I would personally, um, I would personally not go down that route with Thermal Take. As much as uh, they've sent us stuff to review and I'm happy to look at it, their RGB system in the main is way, way too expensive and I, I just can't justify it. The Corsair system again is very similar. Uh, we had the Corsair, uh, what was it the 55, I can't remember what it is now. Oh, it's there. The M55 RGB Pro, which again uses the IQ software. CAF's currently got it in use on her desk. And it's great, it's nice, you can go into the RGB and you can make various settings change. But there is, underneath it, there's the um, XPG Invader case. And I cannot synchronize the RGB of the case with the mouse. So effectively, it is pointless. And that is also a problem I've got with the, the system behind me. If I want to synchronize the keyboard and mouse with the rest of the system, I essentially have to buy a gigabyte keyboard and mouse, which I don't necessarily want to do because I don't, want to do that. I've got other keyboards and mice. So that is something to bear in mind. If you are going down this whole RGB route and you want everything to match up and synchronize, it is exceptionally difficult to do if you want it all to be perfectly synchronized. MSI do a really nice system, the Mystic Sync system. Again, B450 boards, buyers beware because it doesn't kind of work with that. Not really unless you get the higher end boards like the Pro Carbon. But for pretty much most of the system, X570, the B550 boards, no problems at all there, you can use that. They've got some relatively inexpensive peripherals as well, such as the clutch mouse, uh, the keyboard, I can't remember what the keyboard was now. You've got the headset, the GH50 headset. So I had a headset, keyboard, mouse, motherboard, and the RGB, because it's synced to that as well. It was darn near the perfect setup. Unfortunately, the motherboard uh, crapped out on me, so that I had to go back, so that completely shot that out of the way. But, so as far as a, a complete and integrated system, now don't get me wrong, the MSI ecosystem does have its flaws. The software isn't perfect and it does crash quite regularly, but in the main, for connecting lots and lots of devices on a particular RGB theme or setup or whatever, so far that has been the best that I've found on the market so far. So if you wanna link everything, keyboard, mouse, the lot, MSI for me at the moment is the way to go as far as RGB is concerned. Some of the other stuff on the market, like uh, Kev and myself recently reviewed the Sahara, the R20 gaming keyboard, 
which is a great keyboard and it comes with awesome software, but the software doesn't work with anything else. So you can program it to do certain things, but it just doesn't latch onto other pieces of software. So if you're running on an MSI board, the MSI board's like, I don't even know your keyboard's there, mate. I cannot control that. So again, you're stuck at that thing, either make it a static color so that it all looks similar, but really, do you want static colors? I guess some may. Personally, I just, I prefer a color fade. And trying to get the color fade to synchronize, even with things like uh, some of the other Game Max cases, and for sure, the Sahara cases, they have that kind of weird RGB where it goes white, pink, yellow, cyan, magenta, then something else, which is the opposite of what a lot of others do. So even if you do the color fade thing, it doesn't look quite right, which I've currently got over there. My trusty Game Max F15 mesh with the Sahara keyboard and the Sahara, uh, sorry, with the Game Max keyboard and mouse, that's the Strike keyboard and the Strike mouse. Even those three don't synchronize with each other, even though they're all exactly the same brand. The color for the mouse is slightly off, and unless I go for static colors, it is going to remain that way. But Unicorn Puke generally does the trick. And that's what I would suggest if you're looking at doing an RGB theme and you want to get everything as kind of closely matched as possible. Unicorn Puke is the way forward. It's one of the easiest things to match. You can even buy the cheapest, crappiest cooler on Amazon and it'll have basically that on it. You wouldn't have any control over it whatsoever. It'll just do that. But then that's actually really easy to blend in with other stuff. So maybe that is the way forward. Simplicity, keep it cheap, a little bit of illumination. I don't know. Let me know what you think. So is there any more questions? Ah, da, da, da. <laughs> Click text says Yule Brinner. <laughs> Thanks, Kev. <laughs> Good evening to you, Kenny D. Uh, actually, Kenny D, that's incredible. That's good timing. Uh, my other issue with RGB in general is RGB software being really hit or miss. Is oh, you were yeah, that. I missed. I uh, I couldn't agree more. The only other one I would say is if you the Gigabyte system, their Fusion uh, RGB Fusion 2.0 is actually not too bad. And I've actually, like I said today, let's just shuffle along a little bit. I need a bigger room now. Now I've got a bigger desk, a uh, bigger chair. So the Gigabyte system, it works pretty well, but when I put the graphics card in, it didn't automatically recognize it. So what I had to do, and this is actually very common for pretty much all Gigabyte RGB Fusion enabled devices, is you have to uninstall the software completely and then reinstall it. And then magically it recognizes everything which is in there, which is great because you go into a control panel and you've got your motherboard, you've got your memory, you've got your graphics card, if you go into the individual bits, you can control basically every single part of it. You can set the graphics card up. Now, this is a question we had right at the very beginning of the stream. Somebody said, is there actually a real use of RGB? And uh, a really good use is actually thermal monitoring. So if you've got a PC or maybe a bank of PCs and they're all running rendering, like a rendering farm or a mining farm or whatever, you can actually set the RGB to be at certain temperatures. So if you're within, zero to 40 degrees, set it to green, 40 to 60, set it to amber, and 60 upwards, set it to red. So at a moment's glance, you can just look over at your computer, whichever color it's on, you know if it's uh, in trouble or not, which actually I think is brilliant because most people, if you've got water cooling or good quality fans, you're never gonna hear them anyway. So if they've stopped, the first thing you know about it is either the system's crashed or there's blue smoke coming out somewhere which is not good. So there is actually a genuine validatable reason to have RGB in your system in a workplace. Are you trying to convince? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure who I'm trying to convince there, but it might be working. Dave Brun says, wait, isn't this a behind the scenes of the crystal maze? Wow. <laughs> That's Harry Hill. Yeah. Harry Hill, Harry Hill's uh, love child. Do you want your glasses? Matthew Day says, also for data storage, you don't want shingle drives. No, you don't. But you might end up with them and not know about it. So that's something to look out for. Uh, Fazi Azif says, Ryzen 5 1600 in 2020? 
and future for gaming only, no professional workloads or advanced level stuff. Sounds good to me. In fact, the, the Ryzen 5 1600 performs pretty much on par with a moderately clocked Ryzen 7 1700 in most gaming tasks. It's not the fastest and certainly there are other processors like the Ryzen 5 2600 which is a little bit quicker but the 1600 will overclock reasonably well if you wanted to. I still think the Ryzen 5 1600 is a great little chip. How much future it's got? It should have quite a lot because it's a 6 core 12 thread even now the 1700K sorry the 7700K four cores, eight threads, is essentially about the same as it in most gaming tasks, so not bad. Bear in mind that was Intel's flagship processor, what, three years ago, four years ago? Uh, Eric Anthony says, I just purchased the H100i SE Platinum for my build. Y'all's opinion on the Corsair AIOs? I, I've only ever had one Corsair AIO, and that was the H55, I think, back a long time ago. And it seemed okay, it seemed to last a long time, and considering it was in the early days of the, um, the pump designs back then, I think that's uh, pretty decent. One thing I would say, if you're using a Corsair um, cooler, water cooler, AIO, well, actually any AIO, Try, if you're, if you're mounting it at the top, it's okay. It's, you don't have to worry about it too much. But if you're mounting it vertically, I've seen a lot of people doing this recently, and that's having the pipes at the top. You want to really try and avoid having those pipes at the top because when you get evaporation in the water, which you're going to get eventually, as the water level comes down, you're going to introduce noise into the pump, and also then it's potentially you could damage the pump by actually running it dry as the water level drops down. Also, you get pump noise as well because obviously you get your bubbles and stuff at the top of the pump and bubbles generally will try and rise. So they're gonna get pushed out through the, uh, the outgoing side and then pulled straight back in the other side. So you're gonna get air bubbles going around the pump which gives you that kind of gurgling noise you get with pumps every now and then. So if you wanna avoid that, all you do, just turn the LAO 180 degrees and have your pipes at the bottom that way then any air that's trapped in the system will stay at the top hopefully and even if the radiator level goes right down to like halfway because the pipes sit at the bottom you're still going to be pumping water around the system you're not going to have such good cooling effect because part of your radiator is air but it's still going to do its job and you're not going to burn out your pump uh... So hopefully that answers that a little bit. Sky Stalker says, color fade on key keyboard drives me nuts. Never. And do you know what? My keyboard, I always hated RGB. I used to have just a normal Microsoft keyboard, like Calf's beloved keyboard. We both had the same ones, didn't we? Same keyboard and mouse for ages. Until mine got coke in it and we swapped. Yeah. And every now and then, our son, George, his PC would go uh, tits up. And I'd have to go upstairs and work on it. And he had a, uh, I think it was a Steel Series, maybe. I can't remember which one it was now. No, can't remember. Actually, who makes? It doesn't matter. But anyway, he had an RGB keyboard, and I'd go out there and try and do things and get into the BIOS or type in commands in the command line. And I'd be looking at his keyboard, and it's like, oh my god, I can't, I just can't do it. But after probably about a year of, no, actually probably more than that, about two years now of being sent RGB keyboards for review purposes and that kind of thing and basically having to use one with all the lights on, etc. I've got to the point now where I actually do quite like it and I do miss it if I haven't got an RGB keyboard. But then I do like my RGB, so I've had to make, um, I've had to make allowances. Uh, Joe Thompson says, hey Mike, with your help, I fixed my problem with my backplate. Cheers. You missed. Right on, Joe. You missed a bit, I think. Uh, Mark Griffiths says, I just paid 115 GBP for a second-hand 1600 AF. That's not bad. They are going up in price. Uh, Team Plus says, should I buy a new cooler or use the stock? 
And for a Ryzen 5 2600, I would, mm, I would probably upgrade it. The stock one will do the job. It's going to be noisy, and it's not going to keep the temps that much under control. And if you want to overclock or hit those precision boost overclock figures, uh, an aftermarket cooler is definitely worth looking at. And an RGB one would be nice. Actually, you could upgrade the Ryzen 5 2600 to the Wraith Prism, which you can pick up pretty cheaply now. So you can still have that kind of OEM stock look, but still have RGB and also much improved cooling performance. It's actually quite funny. My son's got a 2700X, I think, in his computer. So either a 2700 or a 2700X. No, so SNX, definitely. And he's got the Wraith Prism. And every night when we go up, if he's rendering a video or whatever he's doing, or if it's a bit warmer in the house, you can just hear the fans on. He's actually got a 1080 uh, Finder's Edition as well. So between the blower style fan on that and also that cooler on his processor, and he's in an S340, which isn't the most renowned case for cooling properties, you can hear all the fans blaring away in there. So it's quite funny. Luckily, he's got headphones on, so he doesn't notice it. Uh, Team Plus, uh, oh yeah, so I just built my PC and it works. Right on. We do get a lot of that. Recently, our Discord has become more and more of a, um, a salvation area for a lot of people building PCs. And our mods are brilliant. Yeah, and our, yeah, Kaf just said our mods are brilliant Absolutely. and the expert levels. And actually, anyone who's been chipping in, uh, there's one or two which have been chipping in which are probably... Possibly should be chipping in slightly less, but we won't go into that. Not the time or the place. Uh, yeah. yeah, let's go. Simon Arden says, uh, 3600 is £147 new on Amazon. Wow, that is impressive. Texway's in the house, says, even Mike, Calf, and everyone else. Good evening, Texway. And please, Calf, can you give Texway a spanner, please? Yes. Texway, if you haven't uh, been over to his channel, go and check him out. Another English or British, however you want to look at it, YouTuber. So, represent him for the UK. We got stick together, boys. We really have. We've got a lot of co we've got a lot of competition for those uh, Americans over the pond. We got to do our side of the bargain. Keep tech British. <laughs> Real cool XP says, what do you think of an, an all hot pink PC case? I think that would be amazing. I think it would be even more amazing. Kath thinks it would be even more amazing. Would match my new chair I'm not getting. There's a, a moderately hot pink case that Inwin do on the, based around the Inwin A1 chassis, which does look quite interesting. Uh, I've actually told Inwin a couple of times or hinted strongly that Kath really likes that case and I'd quite like to review it for obviously review purposes, not for personal gain. So maybe we'll take a look at that. Uh, Gus Mortimer says there are loads of pr prisms on eBay right now. There is a lot of them. The prism um, cooler is actually not too bad. I don't think it's particularly well suited for the 2700X and those kinds of processors, uh, 3700X. I think around about the AF1600, um, the 2600, 3600, absolutely fine, and they won't get too uh, too loud. Dis Scott Stalkers <laughs> says, the Discord people are brilliant, can't say enough good things about that. Uh, if you have not joined, you really are missing something. Yeah, it is uh, kind of funny. Mark MC says, are you sporting a new chair mic? Yes, I am indeed. and. If you're interested to find out more about this chair, it is actually a really, really, really cost-effective, I'm not gonna say budget, because everyone hates me saying budget, but actually sod it. It is a budget gaming chair, and you know what I'm like. What your budget is. Yeah, I know. Your budget is in the mind. Yeah, my, my budget is extremely little, so anything I buy is carefully considered and is more of a financial, financial? A financial decision than it is a kind of aesthetics or whatever branding etc i am not a brand snob by any means i'm surrounded by <laughs> uh sahara cheap 
effective brands. Acer, my laptop. Well, okay, I've got an iPhone. <laughs> Always listening. Always listening. Um, yeah, I I do like to get value for money, and this chair is actually one that I would seriously consider spending my own money on. Now, obviously, for those of you that were with us earlier and you heard me say, I've been sitting on those other chairs, which are basically dining room chairs, for 16 years. So that goes to show how that was, it was a hundred pounds for the set, the table and the chairs when we bought it, when we moved in, because we were like skin, properly skin. We didn't have a pot to piss in, we really sold didn't. House. Sold a house, bought a house. Sold a house, moved in from yeah. home, we, chucked everything out of the old house. We threw everything away, so this is what we had to deal with. So yeah, essentially I've been sitting on, what is it, like a, a 12 pound chair for the last 16 years. Every day, slaving over a keyboard, making these videos, replying to the comments, even doing the live streams. You've all seen that chair creaking away. So, yeah, this is much, much more Facebook, comfortable. Uh, if you want to pick one up, there you go. If you're on Facebook, you can get a link for it there. There is actually Mike's a discount unboxing. code as well for Mike's Unboxing viewers, which kindly GT Racing just offered. They didn't, I didn't ask for it. They just said, look, if you want a discount code for your viewers, Otherwise, we can provide you one. It's like, oh, cool. Thank you very much. Otherwise, the video... The video will be out on Monday. So you can, you can check it out and see what you think. But I, it, it looks great. It feels great. And is about a hundred pounds, is all I'm gonna say. And yes, they do do it in pink. And they do it in pink. Uh, Simon Orden says, they do that first player DK in pink. I know, I know. Uh, Gus Mortimer says, hi Mike, new viewer, just built my first PC, having been a Mac devotee for 20 odd years. Sorry for your loss. Uh, watched a bunch of your vids, so thanks for the help. Thanks Gus, welcome to the family. I've missed out things. Um, oh, sorry, Destroyer, I do apologise. How much do you think the RTX 3080 Ti will cost and how much will the 2080 Ti drop? I don't think the 2080 Ti will drop because I think there's still going to be a market for it. I would imagine the 3080 Ti, well, being that it hasn't been officially announced yet, means that there's still time for the 2080 to drop. Realistically, even if the 2080 Ti drops $100, which it could do quite easily, and has happened over the last 12 months it has been out. Is it 12 months? About 12 months, maybe more. So every now and then you see a drop of $100, maybe even more, £100, etc. So. I would think at the 2080 Ti's current price, COVID pricing, I think it would drop possibly 100, maybe $150 in the next, how many months we got? Two to three months, I would say. So you're either looking at a sharp price drop closer to the uh, 3080 release announcement, or we may well see them slightly reducing the prices on our RS, uh, was it the manufacturer's recommended selling price slowly dropping? But being as there's nothing else faster on the market, I think personally the 2080 Ti will drop probably the same day as the other one is announced. And I think the 3080 Ti will probably cost, I think it will probably cost the same as a 2080 Ti does now, today. And I think. The 2080 Ti will drop a little bit, but not a lot. I can't see there being, there isn't any competition for it. So people that want the very best graphics card on the market at the moment, there's only one choice, which is 2080 Ti. So why would they drop price on it? Manufacturers know that, distributors know that, and retailers know that. And even with a new card coming out, it's a weird time of the year because it's kind of, we're heading into summer, which is traditionally a quieter time in PC sales anyway, until we get into that kind of August, September, when we start getting the new product releases. Obviously we missed out on a lot of the shows this year, Computex and stuff like that. So a lot of things have been set back. China, whether or not this is true, I don't know, but from what I can tell, China is still closed for business. So um, resources, 
components, all that kind of stuff is in massively, massively short supply. And it's not just in the PC industry, it's everywhere. Um, in my other jobs that I do, one of them is in the motor parts industry and mostly a lot of the European stuff, generally okay. Japanese and Chinese stuff, starting to see those prices getting jacked up a bit. Whether or not it's because there's not enough and they're jacking the prices up to make more money, I don't know. Um, roof bars, made of metal, but a lot of the stuff is sourced from China, raw materials, starting to see real kind of production issues going on and that sort of thing. So it's a difficult one to tell, depending on what happens with the whole COVID thing, but realistically to answer Destroyer's question, I think the RTX 3080 Ti will cost what a 2080 Ti does now, this very moment. So depending on where you are in the world, I think realistically that is going to be the same price. Texway says, I'm also rocking a Wraith Prism on my 3700X. Awesome. Uh, the 3700X, I missed out the other day, there was a 30, uh, 3800X, which was two pounds cheaper than the 3700X on Amazon. And I, um, I was about, I, I clicked on the affiliate link and as I did, the price jumped back up and I was like, no, I can't do it, I can't do it. You know me, I'm all about saving the money. Anyway, so that is that answered. Um, hopefully that answers it. Uh, uh, Ricardo says, I want to thank to Discord user Akia Shadow for his device about the B450 Mobo. I'll keep it in mind. I'm sure uh, Ikea Shadow will be very thankful for that. <laughs> Tadaman says, Mike, wash your mouth out using that word spend. I oh, know, it's terrible. Uh, Texway says, yeah, I think he's pretty much said what I've said at Destroyer. I don't think you'll see the 2080 Ti's drop by much since the 1080 series didn't really change either. I think that is pretty much it. I can't see it changing much. Uh, Skystalk says, I have the bell, meeting a mate for a drink. See you all later. See you later, Sky. Where is the letter? Yeah, where is the letter? The letter's probably got locked up again for doing some stupid shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Steve Darby says hi Mike do you remember the Sharkoon Silent Eagle fans they were very good back in the day good to see Sharkoon still going yeah Sharkoon did the, the um, they did the there was a Sharkoon fan I can't remember the name of it now but it had like kind of a golf ball dimple to it and they were probably the quietest fans I'd ever heard at the time they were amazing Simon Arden says, I disagree. It'll go down uh, from now over three months. And then when the new one comes out, it'll go back up. Marketing man, why drop it too much? When the new ones come out, they want to highlight the new, uh, when they want the new one to highlight. Yeah, it's uh, definitely kind of dig deep into the crystal ball territory, isn't it? See what is going to happen. Who knows? We, it's, this year is going to be different from any other because of the whole kind of national, uh, sort of global uh, human malware thing. So basically all bets are off, nobody's, no, no, there's nothing, we've got nothing to go on, we've got no kind of um, prior experience of this in the kind of majorly industrialised world. The last time was kind of like, was it 1920s or something, 1915, whenever it was, when there was a big flu uh, epidemic. 18. 18 was it? Thank 1918. you, Kat. 1918. 1918, that's the one. Texway says, um, Sharkoon are releasing some ni nice looking gear recently. The Rev 220 case looks really nice s from some of the images I've seen. Uh, yeah, speaking of which, we I think we've got the Rev 220 come in for review in the very, very near future. Uh, Fazi Asif says, Mike, um, I don't know what that is. Someone's going to have to put that into Google Translate for me. I don't know what that is. Sorry, Fuzzy. Uh, Destroyer says, thanks, Mike, no problem. Try. Ladios, 
hopefully I've said that right. Uh, just did the RAM cache configuration, thanks a lot. No problem. Uh, a similar question, Mike, how much do you think the RTX 2080 will cost a couple of months after the new cards are out? And is it a great option for 1080p ultra gaming? Definitely is a good option for that. It's going to be really interesting to see what is going to happen with the new 3000 series from NVIDIA. If they've, well, the 4000 series is going to be the one to watch out for because if they have managed to do a die shrink, which we believe they have, the, it's always that tick tock. Intel were the same, AMD have been the same, everyone's always the same. So the first tick is generally the, um, the revision of the manufacturing size. And then the second, the TOC, is then the kind of the refinement of the silicon. So the 3000 series will have benefits, the 4000 series will increase those benefits. So they won't get the most out of it on the 3000 series, much like they did with the 10,000. The 20,000 was slightly different because you had the tensor cores kind of th bolted on as well. So that was slightly different, but essentially it was, it was a TOC rather than a tick. Captain Meese Adventure says, Mike, the word of today is tabernacles. Okay. It means do foolish things. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> okay. Fuzzy, um, I do foolish things. Okay. Uh, Roll Camp XP says, NVIDIA not changing till AMD finally answers the ray tracing question. Yes, true. Trooper C says, um, Akia Shadow is a legend, and to be fair, he struck, he stuck with me until my problem was fixed and sent me good deals. What a legend. Akia Shadow is an actual legend. You're quite right. He is in the chat. And he is actually in the chat, lurking. And he has declared himself. Oh, and he has declared himself, so that's okay. So for those of you that are interested and want to say anything specifically to um, Akia Shadow for helping them out in Discord, his name is Dave Burns, and he is currently in the chat, so feel free to... Uh, slate him. Slate... <laughs> don't slate him. Feel free to virtually shake his hand, which you can do, because there doesn't need to be any social distancing, because we're on the internet. It's fine. Or shake his new spanner. Ricardo says, uh, Mike, why the downgrade from RX 588GB to RX 574GB? Only for RGB. Yes. Yes. It is very sad. But as someone who's into RGB and also does product reviews and all that kind of stuff, I do get asked, people say to me, what works with what? And realistically, the RX 574 gig, the, the RX 580 8 gig, although we're saying that mine was only a four gig version, so same amount of VRAM, it's only on a 1080p monitor, so that's not gonna have much of a bearing on it. The RX 580 that I had was a slightly older model and it had a relatively hard life. The fans had died at certain points and it was a power color one. So power color cards generally tend to be clocked a little bit lower, especially the lower end, which this one was. It wasn't even a Red Devil. I think it was something down below that. So the Gaming X, or sorry, the Gaming 4 gig is actually a slightly higher model up the RX 570 chain. So effectively, power wise, they're gonna be, I would say, pretty much identical. I am going to run some benchmarks, and for anyone who's interested, I will be doing the cheapo RX 580 versus high-end, well, kind of high-end RX 570 to see if there actually is a difference. I don't think there is, and I think if there is any difference with a very, very minimal overclock and maybe a little bit of tweaking of voltage settings, I think they're going to be pretty much bang on. I have saved all my settings, so we'll find out, and hopefully we'll do a, uh, we'll do a video on that and see how things go. Uh, da, 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 da. Good evening, Angel Churchill. It's my daughter. Hopefully you're being good, not too drunk. Dave Aitken says, I've got to shoot. Catch you later, Mike, Kath, and everyone else. See you, Dave. David. Don't know if he gets upset with that. Okay, so I'm going to fire up the up here fans just because, well, I've not got enough mess on my desk, so I feel it's probably rude that I haven't. Can I put a cat on the desk? Yeah. Um, probably not. Right, let's put that over there. Because that is something that needs to be packed away, which I, I'm going to have great fun doing later. 
actually. Yeah. Actually, can I be bothered to do that? This is going to make a right old mess. What time is it? No, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Unless anybody actually really does want me to do it, in which case I will do it. But it's it's far too much mess. I'll answer some questions instead. Dave Burns says, slay me. Uh, Textways, Mike, have you ever considered doing some reviews on network attached storage devices? Couldn't see any on the channel from a quick look. Um, I haven't. It's one of those things I've always wanted to do, and I keep on looking at it, and every time I do, I think, yep, yeah, that's going to be the setup I want to use. And then something else comes out, and I'm like, hmm, well, maybe. Or I find something, and it's like, oh, hard drive prices have gone through the roof. So this is probably not a great idea. And we've got another super chat. British Noob says, do it. Do it. In a uh, Palpatine. Palpatine? Is it Palpatine? Palpatine. 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 Bad guy from Star Wars. Shame we can't do emo emojis on him. Steve Darby says, I still have a Gigabyte GTX 1070 GT1 Gaming. Still going strong. We'll upgrade next year to RTX 3070, maybe. Um, yeah, I'm kind of... I'm with you on that one. I'm still using the EVGA 1070 SC, my main PC. And now that Adobe have just given it the kind of the green light with the uh, hardware acceleration for rendering, I've got no real reason to upgrade now. I'm only using a 1440p monitor, and most of the games I play will run quite happily in and around the kind of 80 to 100 frames per second mark. So that's absolutely fine for me. I don't need any more than that. Uh, Danielle Emberley says, I see sometimes uh, comments indicating people are having memory problems with Ryzen builds. Definitely. That is definitely a thing. Um, do you know if it is primarily overclocking issue or people using non-qualified memory? It's generally a little bit of both. Um, some people are quite happy just to slap on XMP settings in the BIOS and be done with it. Large percentage of people will be absolutely fine with that. A very small amount of people, not a chance in hell. The memory is not supported in the QVL list. So basically you're flicking a switch on and the motherboard is like, what, what do you want me to do? I have not got a clue. I don't even know what that RAM is. And it just puts its hands up in the air. It makes a best case judgment on the XMP speeds for that particular type of RAM or that kind of um, frequency. It says, well, let's try that. And then you put, turn it on and nothing. Sometimes it doesn't work at all. Sometimes it's just instability, whatever it may be. It could be, if you get qualified memory off the qualified list, that still doesn't always automatically necessarily mean that it's going to work straight away because you can quite quite easily get revisions in the memory. So you get revision one, revision two, and they change subtle features. Kingston were renowned for doing that all the time. Although people don't generally tend to buy Kingston RAM anymore, probably for that reason. Uh, yeah, so hopefully that answers your question. Kenny D says, what do you think about RGB software? I feel like the majority of it are like hit or miss. Yeah. Two that I find to be really good. Um, the, the Asus Aurora software isn't bad, but it lacks um, features and things you can actually do to the RGB to make it do different patterns. Generally quite stable though. Um, the MSI Mystic Sync, similar sort of deal, a little bit more flexibility on the RGB and a little bit more uh, control overall, I would say, but a little bit buggy, especially some of the rev revisions they've had out have been bloody awful. Um, Gigabyte, Gigabyte, this is a slightly different one again. You've got quite a lot of control, a relatively nice user interface, and what seems like a very stable piece of software but it comes in, well, you don't have to, but it's got this kind of app sensor thing on the Gigabyte boards, which I'm not overly keen of things like that. I'd rather a standalone program, which just does its own thing, and if you uninstall it, it goes. You can get a standalone version of it, but it seems to work better in the app sensor. It's, I don't know, not too bad though. 
Tyler Man says, isn't uh, Fury Kingston? Yes. Yeah, the Fury X Ram is. Which was actually in the Ryzen, uh, sorry, in the um, Athlon FX range, the AM3 socket, everybody was buying HyperX RAM. It was, um, everyone bought it. But HyperX now, I don't know whether it's me, I just don't seem to see HyperX being everywhere like it was. It used to be literally like every Amazon Prime Day sale, HyperX RAM, boom, 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 every single thing, HyperX, really good prices. You go to the computer fairs, things like that, HyperX RAM everywhere. It was just e-buyer, places like that in the UK, overclockers. It was just like stacks and stacks and stacks of HyperX RAM. Everybody was going for HyperX. Then when the g scale RAM came out with the RGB, I think that's when there was a big change. AM4 came in and HyperX didn't get into the RGB field at all, really, in the beginning there was a massive void and they didn't see that part of the market happening I guess and ever since then I think HyperX is still about and um, still is seen but it's just not as as prominent as it used to be I think okay uh, click take care says my 1080 is fine for now Mark Griffith says, waiting to see the update up here. Fans bought some last week, not tried them yet. Oh, go on then. Let's, let's, let's break out the RGB and an absolute shed of wiring. Okay, All right, let's disconnect that for a start. This is give me giving in some peer pressure. Uh, can I say hello to Kenos? Can I say hello to who? Kenos. Kenos. Hi. Loved vids. Awesome, thank you. Hopefully you're referring to mine, not Kev's. Or uh, Texway. Wow, that's a lot of cable. All right, let's do the easy one first of all. So that is the, uh, the SATA. Ton of fans. Can you still see them? Yeah, you, just about. There you go. All right, so we've now got 12 different fans to connect, or 12 different connections here. And, oh, there's a broken one. Where's that from? I know, that's the reset switch. Is this where you're going to do it in here, man? I was going to, but I don't think I can. I don't care, we do it. Eh? You should do it. I've got to do it? Yeah. Do it. Do you want to see the RGB pyramid? The what, what about like dominoes? The collapsing pyramid of RGB. Have you got enough of them? Because you do like dominoes around the house. No. That's just a silly talk. Not a bad idea though. Uh, da, da, da. This is a bright mess. Good thing of it, this thing actually is once you've got everything connected and set up, you can just leave it alone. You don't have to do anything else with it. It did actually look really nice. I had this in the um, the Inwin 103, and I had the extra RGB connection connected up to the front panel LEDs. It did look pretty uh, sick. I think is the word that people use these days, or dope, or Something else. What's another word that the kids use today, Kath? I think sick is probably the best one that we know, isn't it? It's a bit old, isn't it? Is that old word, is it? Wow. Back in sick. Sick, man. <laughs> this is better work. Now, another good reason for actually getting one of these hubs is. It takes off a lot of the load off the motherboard. You imagine if you had all these directly connected off your motherboard header, that is a lot of strain and stress to be put on your system. So to actually take that off and just put it onto your power supply, which obviously that is what is intended for, for providing power, actually makes life a lot, lot easier for the system and also 
for control as well. It's a simplified control. You don't have to worry about one PWM setting for each individual fan. You can just set them up as they are. So let's see if we let's see if we can do the pyramid. I'm not convinced this is going to work. And when I turn it on, it's probably less likely to work. Actually, I won't have a I won't have a fan controller, will I? So it's not going to do any speeds. I can't even get the bottom row to stand up. Need some Viagra. What's that say? Wow. Just seen in the news, actually, an interesting story that uh, in the UK, as of next week, we're all going to have to wear masks in shops. Looking forward to that. That's going to be a whole look. Oh, crap. <laughs> right, I'm going to give up on that whole pyramid thing. No, no, no. Try again. Keep trying. I can't keep trying. Okay, I'll do two pyramids. How's that? Does that work for you? Yeah. Look at that. I'm using designs of uh, uh, element of this. Oh shit! Okay. <laughs> that is so obviously going to happen. Right. Stick that one there. There's no way on God's green earth. Hey, I'm not an entire idiot. <laughs> right, <laughs> what's that? Yeah. Hey, and there we go. There's a fair amount of breeze from there, so at the moment that's in automatic mode, so it's just going full blast. And there is actually a little feature of this which. This is designed to, to run, it doesn't have a remote control as such, but you can actually wire up a reset switch. They do include one in the box. Oh crap, I've got to try and find the reset switch, right. So you put the reset switch into the bottom of the connector, so two pin connector, and then you can use that to cycle through the RGB effects. So if you want to have manual control, you can click that. Now if you press and hold the button, flashes a couple of times and then it goes into motherboard control mode so if you've got it connected to a motherboard then it will do what it's supposed to do oh, and our little cat has come up for a sleep I think no, she's woke up to see this. so press and hold again and then we can cycle through all the colors so there you go, if you've, uh, if you've just bought yourself a set of up here fans, this is what you can expect. Kenny D says he has these fans but they don't stay in motherboard control, wouldn't that work? Yeah, Kenny D, that is a, a common thing, because I think it's a capacitor problem with the, um, with the control box, and as, it, as you turn the PC off overnight, or whatever it is, I'm sure that the capacitor kind of discharged itself and it forgets its settings. That was one of the reasons why I actually added the uh, the reset switch to mine because it for some reason it kept on forgetting it. But after a while, it actually remembered it. And I can't. See, there's no real rhyme or reason why it actually did it. They do look nice though. Mark Griffith says I better hide that switch from my kids. Dave Burns says I have to hit that reset switch every time on damn boot. Steve Darby says, good night guys, got to work in the morning, 5.30. Wow. Sorry that. George. George says, strong wind took off your wig. <laughs> Thank you. We appreciate that. Uh, do they do chain sequence? No, they don't. So they all do exactly the same. They all, that is thing. So uh, they do kind of make their own chain as such, but they don't, you can't have it so like it'll go red, 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 red. That would be really nice if they did, but they don't. That would need um, a much larger addressable RGB section and a much better controller actually.
It's quite hypnotic. There's lots and lots of uh, ones to, ch to choose from as well. Considering the controller built in is only like in that fan hub, it actually does a pretty decent job. I think that's the one I like. I like that. And actually that works really well with the ASUS software. So if you've got an ASUS motherboard and you put it into uh, unicorn puke mode, it looks essentially exactly the same as that. So if for some reason yours isn't storing the information, just leave it in that mode and it will do that every time. That one is also quite similar as well. It's a more, of a, a more subtle fade. Anyway, I'll do for now. Probably not a good idea to unplug them like that, but still. When does that ever bother me? I'm impressed with that. They, they stood up. Are you impressed with that? Yeah. I've impressed my wife. It had to happen. Six. It's only a matter. Six out of ten. It was only a matter of how many years we've been together now. Um, Thirty. Something like that. Twenty-eight, I think. Bloody hell. Twenty-eight years of being together and finally I've managed to impress her with a set of cheap ass up here fans. Pink chair. Yeah. Well if you want a pink chair you're gonna have to speak nicely to our friends over at gtracing.com <laughs> or spend some of my money. <laughs> anyway moving on. Uh, uh, Matthew Day says my ice tech set chains. She's gone. Hey. Oh, he has written that. You yeah. sounded like you were broken. Oh, right, okay, thanks. Um, my ice tech set chains on any chain set have to get the connections right in the, oh, in the right order. I got you. Mark Griffiths says, never ask your wife that question. You're supposed to know. This is true. I have to move my, uh, my, seat, my lumbar support. Oh, that's the first time I've moved that. This chair is really nice. I'm actually tempted to sleep. This chair is actually more comfortable than my bed. But then you know, you guys know what, how much of a cheapskate I am, so you can imagine what my bed is like. Every time you roll over, I hit the ceiling. One thing I found with this chair, actually, which I've not seen in other reviews, is the uh, the pillow. Most people attach it through there, like th through those holes. Whereas I put mine. It's just an elastic strap on the back, just you around that bit. Strap it on straight on your head. I could strap it straight on my. Actually, that. Would... Oh, this is gonna hurt. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Built-in cushion. So now, it doesn't matter where you are. You could go and sunbathe and everything now. That works absolutely perfectly. You should sunbathe and get that stripe on your forehead. <laughs> <coughs> you should. You know, that is a little bit on the tight side. <laughs> And also, it's relatively grease resistant. <laughs> Sorry, GT Racing, if you're watching. My apologies. Bed's made out of pallets. It's. Mark Matthew Day says sunbed tan line, yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> Big Burns says I've slept in my GT Omega racing chair multiple times. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, so that is. Um, oh man, Captain Meets Adventures, that's just wrong. <laughs> Moderately funny, but very, very wrong. <laughs> oh my days. Okay, I think that pretty much wraps things up. We've been this is two hours now into our RGB extravaganza, and I've probably not touched on half of the stuff that I wanted to. Uh, <laughs> Mike's a tennis player. Yeah, that's closer. So, um, yeah, that is pretty much it. Thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully, it's been moderately entertaining for you. If it has, please before you go, stick a like on the video, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and you can catch up with all the other daft stuff that we do through the week. Uh, we do six videos a week, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then live stream Saturday, Sabbath on Sunday, so obviously we don't work on a Sunday, well I do, but you guys don't get to see it. 
until Monday. Uh, Kaf said I had to do something. I didn't, I was pointing that, I think you did. All right, okay. <laughs> no worries. So yeah, don't forget to uh, click on the links. This week we did actually some pretty decent videos. So we did the Easy SMX uh, controller, beginning of the week. We did the Gigabyte B450 Aorus Elite review. How to install CPU coolers, so that one's super useful if you're trying to install something. Acer Aspire laptop video as well for the Intel users if you're on a business or working laptop. We did a video on that so you can check out from the back catalogue. And also on Friday we did the video for the Acer ET1 monitor, which is actually a really good companion to go with said Acer Aspire laptop. So feel free to check out those videos and if you do, check a like on them. And put in the comments section, I came here from the live stream. Then I know you're actually listening to the stuff I say. Oh, yeah. Rather than just drinking and just being daft. Anyway, moving on from that. So, I hope you enjoyed yourselves. Um, we will see you next Saturday, same time, 9 p.m. If you've got any comments or questions, feel free to join us on our Discord chat server and we will we can discuss things there. But as always, thank you all very much for your super chats and all that kind of good stuff. And, oh, that's the wrong window. That's not very useful. So, <laughs> Hopefully you will enjoy the rest of your weekend and we'll see you again in a video on Monday. Thanks for watching.